Every now and then I get to use a 3D printer and find out that not many others have used it, built it or even bought one. Normally that's because it's pretty rubbish printer but sometimes, you know, on rare occasions it's just because people haven't heard about it. The V-Minion seems to be one of those printers so I'm going to share my opinions on it. It's a mini cantilever style printer with a 180mm cubed build volume sold by Ratrick, who are based in Portugal and has plenty of bells and whistles like flexible build play, thick aluminium bed, 3030 extrusion frame, a Fetus Dragonfly hot end, mesh bed levelling, input shaping and pretty thick massive linear rails. My specific V-Minion is modified a little bit compared to the original with a few things that I've designed or adapted myself so I'll cover those like as we go so you know the differences between my kit and the original kit. Firstly let's start off with a kind of little bad thing. The spool holder is just kind of... Uh, no 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 no. The screw's like jammed in here that's how tight this is. Look nothing holding it in just screw and it doesn't Oh, these are not, <laughs> sorry, but these are really not good. <laughs> you can't find them. <laughs> oh, they just jam against themselves. Awful. So I fixed this with two new options. Firstly is a single piece printed spool holder that's good for like one kilogram spools, including the wide cardboard ones like this one. Or the second option is to use some more of the original parts so you don't need to buy anything new. And again, it's like some new printed parts and that's for larger spool holders, uh, larger spools, like the big like two kilogram plus ones. So either or is fine. And I've also added a feed tube over the top here by modifying this Z top piece. And that just helps filament get to the extruder without doing other weird stuff on the way. Speaking of modified designs, I've actually made small modifications to basically every part of the design. So if you want ABS parts for your V-Minion, I'd recommend you use these ones that I've modified because I've printed mine in ABS too. Otherwise, the original designs are actually fine. I've just made little tweaks here and there to make the manufacturer, as in 3D printing them, and assembly of the parts to the printer a little bit easier if you are using ABS. You can find all of my designs for those modified parts on GitHub. You don't have to pay. It's all free. Moving on to some good things, I really like the single rail per axis design. So each axis has one linear rail. It means there's no worries about trying to align like two parallel rails and that helps keep the noise levels down because you get good alignment all the time and it should help them last a little bit longer because you don't get any excessive wear. Lubrication of the rails is pretty easy via a hole in the carriage or like both ends of the linear rails. So that all seems pretty good to me. The quality of them is actually pretty nice too. The frame itself, which obviously all the linear rails are mounted to, is all 3060 extrusion, so that makes it really, really rigid. Obviously, with the exception of this cantilever arm, which is 2020, but that has a smaller linear rail too. It is a lot stiffer than you'd expect if you've seen a Prusa Mini before and the kind of slightly wobbliness you get on that cantilever arm. This one is way more rigid. Like, you could lift this entire printer from this cantilever arm and it barely moves. It's very, very rigid, and that's in part due to the very rigid frame and the very large linear rails that they've used to prevent any of that wibbly wobbliness. The bed design, the heater and the flexible surface etc all work really pretty well. The surface texture is not maybe so good with PLA but does work really well with things like ABS and PETG and like modified versions of those. If you don't want to print a lot of PLA I would probably suggest getting the smooth uh, PEI sheet for the Prusa Mini because it's basically the same size so you can just use that one and it works really well. The probe on the other hand, as in the bed probe on the hot end assembly, is pretty rubbish. It's a low cost inductive probe and it seems to vary quite a lot with temperature so obviously near a heated bed that's less ideal. I would personally recommend going to a Super Pinder or BL Touch. I've gone for the Super Pinder probe and that is working really really well. The choice of a separate electronics box, which is like this big lump over here, is a bit of a weird departure from other recent printers. It's not something we've seen for a while. It's more like something I'd expect to see on a CR10, like original from six years ago. But it does actually kind of make sense a bit. I don't know the original reasons that they actually had for doing it, but the ability to quite easily have the like entire electronics box on the outside of an enclosure, if that's something you wanted to do, it does, you know, that makes sense. 
Unfortunately though, while I'd say they have improved slightly, Rat Rig do still have quite a way to go in terms of electronics assembly, like in the manual and that kind of stuff. And like the overall result you get with wiring solution using their original guide and the original design is just not that great. It's a little bit messy. So that's why I decided to come up with the divider PCB. So this is like my design. I'm selling it on my shop, just so you know. Uh, I think it really helps out a lot. It basically gives you a location. You can wire everything on the printer to that little box at the back. And then there's some like big connectors and everything connects into there. So if you want to remove the electronics box, take it somewhere different or have a way to detach the two, which is quite helpful for moving it around or doing maintenance and that kind of thing, it really helps a lot. By the way, I do need your help and support to continue making videos that are free like this one. So if you're able to support via Patreon, that would be very greatly appreciated. If you can't afford to, that's fine. Just make sure that you're subscribed as that's a great way to support as well. Back to the V-Minion, this printer ships with a WeHo power supply, which basically is a clone brand of Meanwell, as far as I can tell. The fan on this particular unit that is provided by RatRig is always on at maximum voltage. So it's like, it's not only loud, but will wear out quite fast because it's always on. And that will make it then louder because it's worn out. I've replaced that power supply with a basically identical Meanwell model. And on that one, the fan only comes on under high load and, and or high temperature. The Ever modular carriage system, which is this assembly of hot end and extruder all parts around here, continues to be a really good flexible system that provides assembly ready designs. So you just print them off and you can use, like it supports a whole load of different extruders and hot ends and you don't have to like modify and tweak things. It's all just ready to go. Whilst the original one that actually comes with the printer is Ever 2.4, if you want to upgrade to Ever 3.0, which is obviously the most recent one, it brings with it a slightly more rigid mounting between the extruder and hot end, a better cooling duct, and the option of threaded inserts. If you wanted to do your whole assembly with threaded inserts, that's now an option. Ever 2.4 is what I had in my kit by default, but I've obviously, as you can see, upgraded to Ever 3.0. On the firmware side, it's incredibly easy to set up thanks to Mikel's development of RatOS, which is a pre-built, like easy configure option for clipper and mainsail that includes everything you need on one single Raspberry Pi image. If you've not configured firmware before, and it might not seem like a big deal, but really <laughs> it shortens the time a lot between completing the actual physical build and getting to your first print. And that for me makes the whole like experience much more enjoyable, especially compared to having to guess firmware settings for an hour or two before actually being able to print. As with the vCore 3, the modding community for the vMinion is fairly strong. There are plenty of adaptations you can add to your printer, such as screens and drag chains, although for the latter, I'd recommend reviewing the wires you're using before going ahead with such a mod. Most of my print testing has been with a standard 0.4 mm nozzle using the original Dragonfly hotend, printing mostly ABS Pro, which is a modified ABS from Oosnest, which prints with a slightly lower bed temperature and less warping as a result, um, but just a slight loss in like temperature resistance, but it's only a little bit. I've been printing quite a lot of parts for my upcoming Voron 2.4 build, and I've clocked up around 100 hours or so. So not a huge amount, but a fair bit, enough to know whether I'm enjoying using it or not. Print quality is fantastic, as you might expect. Clipper's implementation of input shaping, as well as the included super slicer profiles from RatRig, make for a very quick way to get great prints. My calibration flower test was particularly impressive, in my opinion, giving great skew results prior to adding any compensation at all. Ever 3 seems to have an improved cooling duct over the 2.4 as well, so the overhangs and bridging performance has definitely improved since the vCore 3. So in conclusion, the overall design I think is really good. It's just a few of the components let down that kind of out of the box experience, just, just a little bit. Once you change a couple of things, power supply for example, and the whole machine just becomes a really fantastic, reliable, good printing workhorse. So if you want to buy one and support the channel in the process, there are voucher discount codes in the description and you can get hold of a divider PCB, which is my PCB modification via my website, which is also linked down below. In the interest of full disclosure, of course, RatRig sponsored my live streamed assembly series, but I've not been paid at all to make a review and they've not influenced or previewed this video before release. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching. 
and I'll see you in the next one.